So exploring our data is a really important part to understanding what's happening on our campuses or within our regions. So for this exercise, for this demonstration, I want to show you an example of some disaggregated data. Now, disaggregated data is data that has been broken down by detailed subcategories. So for example, this might mean marginalized group, gender, region, or level of education. Disaggregated data is so important because it can reveal deprivations and inequalities that may not be fully reflected in aggregated data. And so an, an analysis of disaggregated program data over multiple years is a critical first step in understanding the experiences of our students so that we can take action to close gaps and improve equity and access for every student. Now, ideally, you have data in the following suggested format. So uh, with whatever team that you're working with, each team needs four to five years of disaggregated data at the program level so that we have visibility of the disparities in performance measures such as participation, completion, and concentration. So the data pulled for each year, we want it to be in, laid out such that we can see trends like school, year, gender, race, program, for example, like at school A in 2009, there were X number of Hispanic women in welding. Like that's the level of detail that we want. If you can also access data by special population at the program level, this is fantastic. Ideally, this is also crossed with gender and race. But what's so important is that the data needs to be in a format that can be analyzed during the phase of our training. So this generally means that you, it requires significant data scrubbing to position the cells so that they can be configured in pivot tables or for a data team to create dashboards. So let's have a look at an example. So this is a data table from uh, a sample data table. Now you can see here that there are many, many rows. So it goes on to um, thousands and thousands and thousands of rows. Now each row is a single person at a single stamp in time, so in a specific year. So in this spreadsheet, I've organized and I've added the zip code, so this can help me sort out if program titles aren't consistent, which in this data set, that is the case. So I have the program data, I have the zip code to help me sort, I have the identification of gender and race, the year that the student participated, and again, this sheet contains multiple years of data. So you can see here that I have from 2015 to 2019 in data. What this sheet also has is it contains the participation, completion, and concentrator data. Uh, so for what we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at the participation data when we look over at the pivot table here in a second, um, but it depends on how you wanna examine the data that we encourage you to look at all of these different performance metrics. I also have uh, five schools in this sets of data and the set of data. And so uh, again, you may only have your one school. And then there's this final cell that each row is one student. And so you have to add a column with a one for each row to the, for the pivot table calculation. So let's look, and again, you can see here that there are all kinds of programs that are listed in this. So let's look at the pivot table. I have gone ahead and sort of simplified this. Now for schools, I have selected in this case, all five of the schools. Uh, it's depending on your approach, you would probably not want to do this, um, but let's look at the filters here. You can see here how I've organized it. So I've set up a filter as a school. The columns are years. The value is the sum of the quantity. That's the ones that there was a one in each row. And then for the rows, I've sorted it out by the data set, which is the performance measure. So you can see completion, concentrator, participation, the SIP code, then by the program, and then by gender and race. So I've highlighted here one that we're gonna look at. So we're gonna look at SIP code 150201, and this is includes civil engineering or civil technology slash technician. So if we, close this, we see that over the course of time, we had 58 students in 2015, um, and then it went down to 40 in 2017, and then made its way back up to 59 in 2019. 
but we want to disaggregate this a little bit more. So if we just looked at females and males, we can see that there were significantly less females than males in the program. So this is a non-traditional pathway for women. And then when we expand even further, we can see this disaggregation by race. So of the students who were participating, most of them were white. We had a spattering of students over time from um, who were multiracial, Hispanic, or black. And so let's look at the same thing for the men. When we expand open the men, we see that most of the students are white. Um, and then we've got a, a small percentage of students who are black or African American, and then and the same for Hispanic and Latino. And we can see those trends over time. So when you look at this data, again, this is participation data for this particular program. We can ask questions like, what's happening? Why do we have five black or African-American men in 2015? And by 2018, you know, we dropped down to two, and now we're back to four. So this gives you some things to start thinking about, asking questions, right? So we had six Hispanic or Latino men in 2019. Like, what happened between 2018 and 2019 that we saw such a significant increase? Um, and then the same thing when we look at the, the, the female students here. So we had four in 2015. S at some point, we doubled that and got up to eight. What happened? What happened in 2016 that allowed us to see the increase? And now we're back down to three. So this allows us the opportunity to understand that something's happening and it gives us opportunities for where we can go ask questions. Okay. Again, we can look at um, practical nurse LPN training. We can see that there is a pretty fairly steady set of numbers over the course of time from this is 2015. Um, 25, here we go, 2015 to 2019, pretty steady numbers. I'm gonna open this up and then we can see the participation of women. So this is a non-traditional pathway for men. And so we can see that the majority of the people in the program um, by a landslide, this is actually um, much higher than the average because usually men represent um, close to like 13, 14, sometimes 15 percent, um, but we're not hitting those numbers at all in this particular program. And so when we look at the number of males, we can again see that there's a predominance of white men, um, and uh, but yet by 2019 there's almost 50 percent um, black men in the program. Um, and then, you know, these are again opportunities for us to look and see where's our participation and where are there opportunities for us to ask questions and understand what's happening. Okay. So again, this is an example of how to create, um, well, not necessarily how to create, but how to get your data in the right layout uh, to create a simple pivot table to look at data. So again, you could look at the same information for concentrator, like a practical nurse. We can see the differences here. Um, and again, you can look at completion data as well.